Community volunteers in New York distribute cash cards to Puerto Rico's hurricane victims. City volunteers care for a senior who was a gangster, led him to get on his knees to express gratitude. Welcome to our headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. We begin our program today with stories of city volunteers delivering disaster relief aid in different parts of the world. Puerto Rico declared bankruptcy in U.S. federal court in May of this year. 2017 was also the most destructive year for Puerto Rico. On September 20th, Hurricane Maria devastated the country. Many victims chose to move to the United States, mainly in Florida or New York. City New York chapter worked together with New York City Office of Emergency Management to distribute cash cards to hurricane victims. Let's take a look. Glass windows fell inside the house, so my house was destroyed. All the water went inside, everything got wet. We were without light or water before we came over here. The day we came over here, it was 44 days without water or light. We were eating um, military food because there were no food in supermarkets, no water, no. <laughs> no. Not everybody wants to leave the island. If, if you leave the island, it's because you are desperate. I mean, if, because you have nothing. So, so she told me yesterday, uh, I was walking, listen to this, I was walking through the streets and I look at the right side. Of, here in Flushing. <laughs> she came and looked and said, oh, help for Puerto Rico. This after uh -huh. from the uh, Suchi Foundation. Suchi, I'm sorry, for the Suchi Foundation. So uh, I'm going there. I'm grateful that Suchi gave me cash support so that my daughter and I don't need to worry about buying food. She's so beautiful. In the aftermath of the massive earthquake in Mexico, city volunteers have held free clinics in addition to aid distributions. At the free clinic in Zacatepec, services from Western and Chinese medicine doctors were provided. For many affected residents who came to the free clinic, they tried acupuncture for the first time. Let's join them there. Ask her to relax. There are specific points for the back. Master says, be attentive with every moment of your movement. You just need to be mindful. With that kind of fall, she cannot recover very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Cuando llegué, me dolía mucho mi espalda. When I first came here, my back was painful. I was afraid to come since acupuncture is something I've never tried before. However, after the acupuncture session, I feel very good. My back and my whole body have relaxed. In times of disaster, I did not know how TCM doctors can help. After coming here, I've discovered that many of them injured their shoulder and ankles when the rubble fell on them. For the past two months, they've endured the pain. I love you too. I love you too. After 20 minutes of acupuncture, they walked home happily, and I realized how important my work is. If she can touch the ground today, then she can leave. We, we need some music here so that people would dance, right? Move. Maybe that's a good idea. We should have that, some music in the afternoon. 
I've been in a lot of pain since the earthquake because I lost my son and my mother, and I was injured. I also have problems with my vision and hearing. You've helped me. I was hesitant to come, but I see now there was no need to worry. It is my first time trying acupuncture. It is not painful, but it is a bit scary. You can imagine when you get needled, you feel the pain. But you need to concentrate and tell yourself that it does not hurt. It does not hurt. This way, you won't feel the pain. The fact is, I feel very relaxed and my pain is all gone. I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also in Mexico, city volunteers have held their fifth large-scale aid distribution for quake victims in Zacatepec, helping more than 1,300 families. Since the aid distribution day, December 12, happens to be an important holiday, the residents said that receiving the aid supplies is just like receiving God's blessings. Let's take a look. Today will be a happy day, a day filled with joy for the residents of Zacatepec, whose homes were damaged in the earthquake. Today I have come to the city's aid distribution and they are from Taiwan. We receive financial assistance in the form of a supply card that we'll be able to use at the stores they listed, as well as nutritional supplements and a blanket. It's been three months since the earthquake struck and a month since the last time we saw them. Therefore, not much has changed. Since Zuji volunteers have come, we hope that Zuji seeds of love can sprout here. How was my home after the earthquake? Well, it was in shambles. We're going to buy some building materials to support the beams, so the house won't fall on top of me. When the earthquake hit, I was inside the house. I did not know when they got me out of the house. I had no idea. Two and a half months or three months after the earthquake, people no longer bring us supplies. Therefore, we are grateful to receive the supply cards, which can allow us to get food that can last us for two to three months. That is very important. With the supply cards we've received from the Tzitin Foundation, I will continue to repair our house. If we have some extra money left, I will buy jackets for my kids because it is very cold. What really touched me is the feeling of love they've given everyone, even though these people are not their families. I'm very touched because we do not even help each other. However, they've come from afar to help us. I want to thank Tsuji for the help you've given us. Our government did not do this for us. You've done this, although you are from a foreign country. I want to cry tears of happiness. They've come to visit us. May God bless them. May God bless your country. Thank you. In Italy, since city volunteers provided disaster relief aid in the aftermath of an earthquake in 2012, volunteers have overcome long distances to join Sigi's year and blessing ceremonies. At the ceremony this year, the mayor, Fanelli Emilia, attended the event and said the blessing ceremony is special because it combines two different cultures. 
With the Dragon Dance, the first city's year end blessing ceremony in Europe takes place at the city hall of Finale Emilia. The mayor, who is attending for the second time, joyfully received the red envelope of blessing and wisdom. It's great. It's a very special occasion since it is a blessing ceremony that incorporates two different cultures. Such volunteers give out red envelopes and other gifts. Since an earthquake struck Italy in 2012, such volunteers have provided disaster relief aid. <laughs> Since then, city volunteers Rudolf from Germany and another volunteer from Perugia will travel long distances to come join the year and blessing ceremonies. Now that they've encountered Ciji, we can spread more joy to more people through the connection. At the occasion, many residents also donate to help other less fortunate people. At the end of the ceremony, city volunteers distribute monetary aid to 84 families affected by the earthquake. With lamps in their hands and dharma in their hearts, the attendees pray for a world free of disasters. Taiwan, Mr. Lee was once a gangster, but now he's a frail old man who has been held by Ciji. He lives alone in an old house with a roof that has been eaten away by termites, which could collapse at any moment. He has no hot water and his health is failing. The care of Ciji volunteers who look after him has really touched him. Therefore, he got on his knees to express his gratitude. I took the wrong road in life. I definitely went the wrong way. Mr. Lee still communicates in the rough language reminiscent of his life as a gang member. He is now 65 and lives alone in this narrow little house with a ceiling that is collapsing. He has no hot water throughout the year. The ceilings has been eaten by termites for decades and it is already rotten. If we don't do repairs, it will collapse as he is living in a dangerous environment. He used this bath basin to bath with cold water and you wouldn't be able to bury it in winter. During this volunteer visit, an electric hot water heater was installed. A carpenter replaced the ceiling. These actions impressed Mr. Lee, who believes that Ziji holds a position of great honor. <laughs> I suddenly knelt down as brother to repair the ceiling and he ran around all day doing the work. It really moved me. There's no need to kneel down like this. I was shocked and quickly pulled him to his feet and told him not to do this, but he was really moved. Over the past two years, with the encouragement of volunteers, he insisted on doing recycling work despite his mobility issues. When I see him doing recycling work, he's very enthusiastic. You can see that he's doing all of the work from a very happy heart. Mr. Lee says he will never stop giving thanks to Ziji for helping him. Even later in life, he promises to donate his organs to help others. Every year from the end of November to end of December is the harvest season for roselles. From experiments, professionals have discovered that roselle can reduce high blood pressure, high blood lipids, and high blood sugar, as well as protect the liver. In our next report, we'll learn some ways to prepare roselle so it'll be both delicious and nutritious. The pulp is large and fresh. Look at its color. It's bright and suitable to be made into preserved fruits. It will taste good. If it's like this, which is more mature, it will be suitable to be made into beverage. Look, its seeds are not as large. From experiments on animals, we've discovered that roselle can decrease the three highs. It can protect our liver, increasing antioxidants and decreasing GOT and GBT. In addition, it can prevent macular degeneration. This is the head of roselle. Cut it open and take out the seeds. Wash it clean and mix it with salt in a bowl. 
This way the pulp will soften. After that we add some rock sugar or something else. After an hour we can boil it quickly with hot water. Then we need to put it in ice. In five minutes we scoop it up and mix it with sugar. Then we can put it in the refrigerator. We can eat it after placing it in the fridge for a day. After the water boils, we place the seeds in there. Then we scoop it up and add roselle. Cook it for about five minutes and then add sugar. The ratio is one to two. With one kilogram of roselle, we need two kilograms of sugar. Cook it slowly. In half an hour, we can turn off the stove. As the fruit matures, its pectin turns from non-water soluble to water soluble. It can help us get rid of toxic chemicals in the body and prevent cancer. After we pick out the seeds and wash it, we can turn it into beverage. If you cannot cook that much roselle, you can dry it and preserve it for a year. After the water boils, we add the roselle. After five minutes, we can pick up the roselle. We only want the juice. We can add some rock sugar according to everyone's taste. City volunteers in China recently held a second winter aid distribution in Kouchen Township of Jilin Province. On the second day of this event, they experienced the heaviest snowfall of the year. Although the distribution venue lacked water and power, volunteers overcame difficulties to cook hot porridge for the residents to keep them warm. Before they can cook porridge, they have to face this challenge. The residents brought a cart of firewood, getting everything ready for cooking. After burning firewood, the volunteers later add some sugar and jujubes to cook the delicious porridge, which is made from the city's instant rice. We have the shortage of water and power, so we have to prepare a big pot outside to cook porridge. It's very cold outside. Under the temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius, a winter egg distribution is held in Yongji County, Kouchen Taoshi's Waito village. Worried that the residents may suffer from the cold weather, volunteers overcome difficulties to prepare hot porridge for them. Auntie, please eat it up. You can bring this back to your husband. With the volunteers' persuasion, Mrs. Shi Fengzhen was finally willing to eat up the cup of porridge in her hand, warming her stomach and heart. Meanwhile, on the other end of the Kouchen Township, the venue of the winter at distribution held at the local school in the Shuangdinzi village is covered with snow. God is taking good care of us today. This is the heaviest and most beautiful snowfall since winter arrived in Jilin this year. <laughs> Residents feel warmth and love after receiving hot porridge on the windy and snowy day. This cup of water is filled with compassion and kindness. We can overcome any calamity since I believe God will also help those who are kind. Eugene Murray is a Marino father from the United States. He formerly became a priest when he was 26. He briefly went to Zhanghua and later transferred to Taichung, where he has been serving ever since. He takes care of vulnerable people as well as prisoners. He also taught English at a university and high school. He has now been in Taiwan for nearly 60 years. For him, Taiwan is already his home.
I was born in the United States in New York, and the Marinol Fathers, which I belong, is a foreign missionary group, so I would not be working in the United States. When they told me I was going to Formosa, but I didn't know where Formosa is. Formosa. No Formosa. When we came to Taiwan, our leader said, you have to learn Taiwanese, so I learned it for nine months. They sent me to Zhanghua's Arling, and after one year, they sent me to Taichung. But that church in Taichung mainly was comprised of ethnic Chinese. When I was four years old, I went to the kindergarten here. I know father has devoted himself to Taiwan, and now he's old and infirm, and still did not go back to the United States, but continues to help us through this overseas service, which has been quite touching. Father is quite old and has already had to go to ICU after suffering two strokes. Normally this would cause someone to go home to a senior care center, but he is continuing to serve God each day. The church should care for the elderly and the sick who can easily give up hope. When their heart is sick and they are old, it is easy to give up. When I go visit them, I give them courage and happiness. Often we see the priest whose foot appears painful as he visits these communities where the road isn't very smooth. He even goes on these days when it is hard to make such a visit, and he takes his Bible with him to preach to other people. I love all the people, and I hope that the church in Taiwan can develop and serve more people. In Malaysia, city volunteers in Klon have started to implement Happy Campus program since 2011, subsidizing poor students' transportation, food, and cramp school fees. The volunteers will visit the students before the distribution. We'll leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>